Hi, I'm Justin Kapos, and I'm here to talk to you about a cloud environment that we've constructed out of end-user machines. Most cloud environments run in a data center owned by a large company. Instead, our cloud is made up of machines run by volunteers from all around the world. In fact, you can run the software in the background on your desktop, laptop, or phone while you're doing other tasks. In this way, it's sort of like the peer-to-peer -peer software that many of you use, only instead of supporting one application, it lets developers build whatever applications they want while remaining safe for users. Let me show you how to use our cloud. First, a developer decides they want to build an application. They register a developer account. The developer then logs into their account and downloads their credentials and tools that allow them to access the cloud. Following this, they write a program or use an existing program. Now the developer can acquire cloud instances all around the world and deploy their program on them. It only takes a few seconds to get your software up and running. By default, every developer can access 10 cloud instances at a time. If a developer wants to access more instances, they can install a cloud software on their machine or have their friends install it on their machines. For every machine that participates in the cloud because of a developer, that developer gets access to 10 more cloud instances. There are several things that made constructing our cloud environment really difficult. First, we wanted to be sure that our code was not a major security risk for users. Given that you hear about flaws in sandboxes like Flash frequently, it's clear that it's hard to write correct sandbox code. We constructed a novel security isolation mechanism that ensures that a bug in the vast majority of our code will not allow an attacker to escape the sandbox. Second, one of the defining characteristics of a cloud container is that the virtual machines are uniform commodities. That means that a programmer can predict how a virtual machine will behave. However, our users run a large number of different operating systems and device types. To prevent portability problems from occurring, we develop new testing techniques to validate the portability of our platform. A final challenge that we faced was performance isolation. A major goal of our platform is to avoid interfering with the performance of the user's other applications. We had to devise techniques to provide performance isolation without modifying the user's operating system or requiring administrator access. These were just some of the technical challenges that we faced when building our system. Now, let's look at some of the neat things that are currently being rolled out on our cloud. Hi, I'm Albert Raffetzeder from University of Vienna in Austria. We've ported the software to the Android platform so people can experiment with what they think your future favorite mobile web service is going to look like. Hi, I'm Jeannie Albrecht and I'm a professor at Williams College in Williamstown, Massachusetts. Together with my student Danny Huang, we are adding an extension to Seattle called Shims that make applications work better in unreliable network connections so you can surf the web even if your connection is flaky. I'm Alan Lowe. I'm not a fan of web censorship, so I've created a service that allows users to host their content collaboratively without having to worry about government censorship. And I'm Sebastian Morgan. I've created a service that allows users to find content like this through DNS. In addition to these projects which are well underway, there are several other projects that are just getting started. Hi, I'm Chris Matthews from the University of Victoria. We're studying how to make programs that run in the cloud much more general, secure, and portable. This will make it so that your cloud applications work well, even when you aren't connected to the internet. Hi, I'm Catherine Isbister from NYU's Polytechnic Institute. I research social games, how to make them interesting and fun for people to play, and I'll be working with Justin to use the Seattle system to build social games that we can really use to get under the hood to understand what makes social games work well. Hi, I'm Rick McGear from HP Labs. Why isn't this thing working? Why can't I talk to the network? Why can't I see what's going on? The ability to go off and talk to the device, get the device to tell you what it's seeing and what its problems are, is absolutely golden. And that's, a, a, that's an application that I think is going to be of tremendous utility to Seattle in the near future. Most of the software that you've just seen was written by undergraduate students who started research as sophomores or juniors. You too can participate either by contributing resources, writing new applications, or even by helping to develop our core cloud software. For more information about how to participate, please check out this link.